Hello and welcome to DFS Coach Talk. Today is Sunday, October the 24th. I am Joe Sarvati, affectionately known as Coach, and I am here to talk with you about NBA DFS on this wonderful Sunday. We have a solo game at 4 p.m. Eastern, and then we're really going to focus on that five-game main slate this evening. It's a, a great slate. Still need a little bit of news, but we think we are closing in on it. Uh, real quickly on the front, in the you know, Coming in the front door here, quick thumbs up, quick uh, subscribe button if you haven't already subscribed. Little comment there really means a lot to us, helps us move up that algorithm on YouTube. And uh, hit the little uh, bell alarm up, the, up in the uh, upper corner there. That'll let you know when all of our podcasts post, which we're posting NBA, PGA, NFL, and of course MLB uh, World Series coming up. So very excited. Congratulations out there to all the, the Braves and Astros fans. Should be a really uh, fun series for sure. All right. Great thing about NBA on Sundays, you get some of that residual play from some of the NFL guys that are mainly NFL players. So there are some NBA dollars to scoop up, and we want to attack those and, and get right on them. So uh, if you're a new listener, welcome. We'd love to have you. We do seven-day-a-week NBA podcasts. Throughout everything that's NBA, regular season, uh, post postseason, summer league, preseason, you name it, we're covering everything NBA. So, uh, and also join if if you're listening by audio. We have a lot of audio listeners through all the different forums: iTunes, uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podbean, Stitcher, iHeart, and uh, Amazon Music now as well. Uh, take a second, just give us a quick five stars and a little comment. That will enter you into a contest for a free five-day all-access membership to Coach Talk. And that is drawn in seven days from today on Halloween, October 31st. We draw at the end of each month. All right, let's dive in and take a look at this first game. We're not going to spend a ton of time on it, but we cover every game here at Coach Talk. We're committed to doing that, and we wanted to... to uh, in case anybody wants to hit a uh, showdown slate early, this is a 4 p.m. Eastern start. It's the 2-0 Charlotte Hornets against the 1-1 Brooklyn Nets. As far as the line goes, it is uh, Brooklyn by a big 9.5. Uh, 234, big fat over under, but it's a showdown, so it doesn't really make that much of a difference unless you're finding one of the sites that, that does not all day or includes it, uh, you've got a huge implied total for the Nets at 121.75. Got to love it when you have an implied over 120. It's not that common. The Charlotte Hornets, 112.25. Um, so very interesting there. As far as the injuries go, uh, it looks like the, um, of course, we know Kyrie Irving. Everybody knows he's not playing, probably could be for the year. And then Terry Rozier is questionable. He's been the real pivotal guy that we need news on each day because if he plays or doesn't play, it is impactful to that game. Uh, after that, you know, let's take a look real quickly at some some plays from this game uh, that would make sense. Showdown, it's you know, it's completely different. I mean, the bottom line is, do you go with uh, you know a Harden or uh, Durant. I mean, I don't see how you not you, that you don't play one or the other. But again, on a showdown slate, pricing for a captain's roll 14 7 for Harden, 15 9 for Durant. Ouch. So, not going to get to both of them, but you know, certainly one or the other has to be in the lineup as far as I'm concerned. <clears throat> Your other key uh, players in this are LaMelo Ball at 12 6. Again, this captain's uh, showdown slate uh, single game. Gordon Hayward, who's looked good at 11-4. Uh, you know, he really looks like he's right in the flow of things. And then after that, you go to that second tier of guys. You know, you can go um, to a, a Claxton at 6K, super value. 7-5, uh, Patty Mills can fit in there. Been great off the bench. Joe Harris at 8-4 is a little much. Uh, Blake Griffin is splitting that time, too, with LaMarcus. Uh, LaMarcus is only 6-6. Griffin overpriced at 9K. Not thrilled with any of those guys, really. 
Uh, from the Hornets side, if Rozier doesn't play, Kelly Oubre is a, a you know definite consideration at nine nine. Uh, Rozier's at 11-1. If he plays and doesn't have restrictions, uh, this could be a solid game for him as well. Um, sneaky little play, Mason Plumley. He is getting good minutes at center. You know, it's he's not always the most fun pick. He can't make a foul shot, but he does grab a lot of rebounds and he does do well on the interior. So just an idea, quick flashpoint of that game if you're going to play uh, the, the solo slate. All right. Uh, let's dive into this five-game main slate. It starts at 7 p.m. Eastern. First game, it's Orlando Magic and the New York Knicks. A very low total of 215 and a half. Knicks favored by 12. So you got a big favorite, low line. So that, you know, not, not the best way to go generally. However, let's look at it. You've got a 101.75 implied for Orlando, 113.75 for the Knicks. Uh, from the, as far as injury wise, let's, let's take a quick look there. Uh, you've got the, the Knicks with Taj Gibson, Gibson questionable. And then Nerland's Noel, uh, is more than likely out. Uh, so it, we really do need the no, news on Gibson because of that elevates Mitchell Robinson. It also means Randall's going to get uh, to eat more, you know, at the center position, when they go smaller. So we do need that news and we're going to keep an eye on it throughout the day. You know, if you want any of these updates and information, just jump in with us at dfscoachtalk.com because this kind of information we'll be posting all day in our uh, discord channel. Um, Kemba Walker, you know, you know, the question with Kemba is let's look at some pricing. Oh, I forgot the Orlando injuries. Gary Harris is questionable. I, I heard he's going to be out for a while. Then they got a bunch of guys out. Uh, Carter Williams, Fultz, Isaac Moore, and Okiki. So they are playing with a young group as it is, and then they have half their team uh, injured. So tough way to start the season for a young coach and a uh, you know a new young team, but uh, that's part of it. Um, as far as uh, you know, who to target here? I think Cole Anthony at the six point one has been very solid. Uh, for the Hornets thus far. Um, they are on the first night of a back-to-back, -to -back too. So I wanted to mention that because, uh, I'm sorry, uh, yes, Orlando's on the first night of a back-to-back. -back. They play tomorrow. But they have young guys. I'm not really concerned about that. You may not get quite as hard of a push on a guy like Mo Bamba with a back-to-back -back coming. And he's at 6.2. He's been very good. But, you know, the back-to-back -back is a little bit questionable. Wendell Carter Jr. at 5'7 is still underpriced. Again, I'm going over DraftKings uh, prices just for simplicity. And then we'll we uh you know we'll look at FanDuel and Yahoo in Discord also. Franz Wagner, who's played good minutes, still, you know, ice cold rookie though at 4.5. Uh a little bit difficult. I've played him. You know, I'm not sure about the ceiling. Feel fairly good about the floor with him. Um We'll see from there. Is it going to be Suggs, uh, Harris, who may play? Uh, you know, and then you've got bench guys there: Ross, Hampton, Rolo, uh, Mo Wagner. Uh, so you know they're playing a lot of guys. They're young. They are taking their lumps. Uh, you know, but there are some playable commodities, specifically Anthony and Carter, at the top of my list uh, on the Orlando side. New York Knicks, you know, they're out to a, a hot start here. They're an exciting team. Um, you know, the, the main thing with the Knicks, they're 2-0, and by the way, and Orlando's 0-2. Um, you know, they're having some timeshare at guard, which makes it undesirable to me. Kemba Walker, Fournier, Derrick Rose specifically. You know, then you're going to have Burks and Quickly and, and some of these other guys trying to get minutes. So, not thrilled with with that, especially at the prices in the 6K marks for Kemba, Fournier, uh, and Rose is just uh, below that. But not interested there. RJ Barrett gets big minutes, but he is hit or miss. You know, decent ceiling, uh, sort of low floor, though. He's sub 6K. You can consider him. You know, Julius Randle's always the play, I mean, right now. He's just 
dominating uh, all the dominating the ball. You know, if they're shorthanded, I like Julius uh, specifically if Gibson out is out um, because Mitchell Robinson, he's going to get X amount of minutes. We'll see, you know, is that 20? Is it 25? Does he not get, you know, does he get in foul trouble? There's a lot of things, you know, that are questionable with Mitchell. Not a bad play in a GPP, but not cash. But if Taj doesn't play, that means Julius Randle's going to get extra minutes at the bigs. And then at that 8-7 tag, that's not bad. I mean, he's been a $9,000 plus player, in my opinion, for the Knicks. Uh, the only concern is this game could blow out, although Thibodeau doesn't care if they're up 100 or down 100. He generally plays his guys, so that's not as bad. But that 215 and a half over under is a little bit uh, worrisome. Um, for me, you know, I like, like I say, I like the Anthony and Carter, maybe Suggs off the bench. And then Julius Randle is really where I have the big circle with a possibility for RJ Barrett if he fits. All right, we go on to the second game on the main slate. It's a 7 o'clock game as well, and it is the Boston Celtics versus the Houston Rockets. We have Boston minus 5.5, a 223 over under. 114.25 uh, is the implied for Boston, only 108.75 for Houston. Um, definitely Houston looking like a young team. Uh, they are 1-1. One See if they can improve on this. Boston is surprising 0-2. Uh, they're certainly looking to uh, get it together. Um, let's see. For injuries in this Boston-Houston game, also Boston's on the first night of a back-to-back -back as well. So keep that in mind. That can affect rotations a little bit uh, as well. Um, Injury-wise, Jalen Brown, the big news that we need, he is questionable as the time we're uh, putting this bod podcast out there. If he doesn't play, I go with, with Jason Tatum. I always say that. There are certain teams that have two studs and two studs only, and when one sits, you just play the other and don't even think that hard about it. So if Brown does sit or is very limited, I think Jason Tatum's a great play. Uh, if he does play, you know, that changes it up a little bit just because of, um, you know, the, the price. And so we got to watch that. Uh, we know Wall's not suiting up anytime soon for Houston, probably never. And then Matthews is questionable. All right, let's take a look at some pricing in this game and see where we're at and who's playable. Um, let's start on the Boston side. Smart at 6-1. Again, you know, a lot of it has to do with Brown plays. I think Brown's going to play, though, personally. Uh, Brown's 8-1 and Tatum's 8-8. Eight -eight. So you're spending up. And you're going to have to, you know, really choose where you want to go there. Is this game going to stay close? It's only a five and a half point spread. They need a win after being 0-2. Houston is not the best defensive team out there. I do respect Jay Sean Tate's defense a lot. I think he's a really good defender. I think, you know, he'll probably guard Tatum. If, if Brown or Tatum uh, aren't in the game together, he'll guard one of those guys. So that is a bit of a deterrent. But, you know, again, they're not the best uh, team in, on the perimeter as far as stopping the guards. So I think Brown and Tatum have to be considered. I'm not going to play both. Uh, I'd really need to see that Brown is going to be without any limits. Uh, we had Brown listed in game one as questionable, and he played uh, some ludicrous like 46 minutes because it was an overtime game. Uh, so you never know. We have to follow that news, and we will. We'll be uh, watching the beat writers, the coach speak, and we'll rep be reporting that in Discord throughout the day. Um, after that, you know, Horford, Schroeder, Richardson, Langford, Pritchard, uh, Grant Williams, just not interested in those guys. Robert Williams, you can take a look at. He did have a smash game, but he is over 6K now, so a little concern there. Christian Wood, what a game he had last time out. Um, and But he's up to 8-4 now. But the nice thing is on some sites you can use him at power forward and center. So you got to consider him. Uh, you know, a punt play that might not be that bad is Tice at 4-4. But Sengun at 3-9, you know, he's he's been just fine. And he gets those extra minutes and mop-up minutes. So you can look at him. 
Uh, and then, you know, from the Houston side, the only other guys really, you know, the Kevin Porter 7-4, though, is, is awfully expensive. He's probably going to get some Marcus Smart defense, so I'm not going there. Jalen Green has been very less than impressive, as picked by many as the rookie of the year. He's not quite turned the trigger, and he's going to face some Brown uh, defense more than likely. So not interested even at the 5-2 number. I don't think Jay Sean Tate's a bad play at 5-6. That's cheap. You know he's going to get a ton of minutes because he's got to be in there to guard Brown and or Tatum. And uh, he's scoring the ball a bit. You know, he gets enough of all the periphery stats to make himself in play uh, as a decent value. If you can afford Wood at 8.4, very tempting. So I will have exposure here. Um, I think, you know, a one-off from each side uh, that's, that are solid players and maybe uh, try to find a little bit of value with somebody like a Tate. All right, next game, game three. It is the Brooklyn, I'm sorry, the Philadelphia 76ers. It's also a 7 o'clock game at the Oklahoma City Thunder. Uh, interesting. All the news, it just depends strictly on the Embiid news. That's gigantic. Uh, Philly's 1-1. One and one. The Thunder are 0-2. Oh and two. and watching, and they are going to have a rough year. Good luck with that team trying to get some wins. Uh, they look terrible. So you've got a, a bunch of things here. Right now, it's Philly minus 7.5, 216.5 over under. Implied total 112 for Philly, 104.5 for Oklahoma City. Pretty weak. But we don't know for sure if Embiid's playing. He's listed as questionable. I'm going to expect him to play and see what happens from there. Uh, you know, from the injury standpoint, let's look through the whole team so we can uh, check that out a little bit more. Thunder doesn't do not have any injuries. They got all these young guys and they're ready to go. But Embiid. The big news of the day, the, the news that you have to have really to complete your roster, because if he plays and isn't limited, he's your best play because he's playing against a terrible Oklahoma City team. Uh, if they can, you know, if Oklahoma City can keep it under 10, like the spread states in Vegas, seven and a half, you know, Embiid becomes very, very valuable. And his backup, Drummond, is doubtful. I've seen that he's already out in some spots, so he's not going to have that true backup center. We know Shake Milton is still out, and Ben Simmons is not with the team. So, you know, the Embiid news is really affects this game in three ways. One, like I mentioned, he's just the best play on the slate, in my opinion, if he plays. If he sits... Uh, that really elevates Tobias Harris. I think that he becomes the focal point in this game and he'll get more rebounds, obviously. You know, they'll have to go uh, a lot deeper to that bench uh, if the, the two bigs are sitting, but I do think can be plays. But just in case, you know, there's going to be, you're going to see some uh, George Yang. He'll get in there, Paul Reed will probably elevate into the rotation, and then they will play uh, some small ball uh, as well. So, you know, that's that's the big thing here is do, uh, you know, we need to see that news. And the second thing that it affects is that rotation, like I just said, for Philly. And then it, it really affects the Oklahoma City side of the ball because his the interior defense with, uh, with Embiid in there is possibly the best in the league. Having Drummond in there helps because he's active. He's out, more than likely going to be out. So you're going to get some inside wheeling and dealing there. And can the Thunder take advantage of that? It's possible. Shea can slash. Dort can slash. Giddy's big. He'll take it to the hoop. And then Baisley, Roby, and some of their other bigs that they'll rotate in there. Poku's got some size. Derek Favors, the, the veteran. Nobody that makes you jump out of your seat. You know, Philly looks pretty solid in this, in this game regardless. Like I say, Oklahoma City just doesn't look strong. I still like Tyrese Maxey at that 5-7 tag. I think he's still too cheap for a guy that is their uh, true point guard. Uh, you know, Tobias at 7-8 is a, is a good play. Even if it be plays, he's a phenomenal play if he sits. 
So we will evaluate this game based on that news as the night, uh, as the day wears on. From the Oklahoma City side, you know, that, that 104.5 uh, implied total and the way they're playing, Shea's still too expensive at 6'8", in my opinion. I, I have to see him have a really good game. You know, everybody keeps taking him. His ownership's been good. People are saying he's underpriced. Well, you're not underpriced if you don't step it up. So he's going to stay on the bench for me, at least for now. And uh, once I see that change, then we'll start talking about him. 5-3 on Baisley, though, is, I think, a dangerous price. I really like him. 4-7 for Giddy. There is some value in this game on the Thunder side, especially if they hang in there, especially if Embiid sits. All right. We have two games left on the main slate. Real, real quickly here. If you'd like to join us, dfscoachtalk.com. We have as little as a three-day pass for $10, a five-day for $19, all different kinds of memberships that you can uh, purchase. And the big thing at Coach Talk is when you become a member, you're part of our Coach Talk family. We're going to work with you. We have we do one-on-ones. I do them with, with most of our members. And what we're, we're going to talk about off the bat is bankroll management, contest selection. That is what the foundation needs to be for any DFS player that wants to have sustainable wins for a long period of time. So we'll we'll go over that with you. You can, you know, check it out, utilize for whatever piece of that that you want. Uh, and then, you know, you're going to get everything that we have, not each individually sport, individual sport. You don't have to buy up or add on anything. You become a member, you get everything that we've got. We provide a coach's clipboard on DraftKings for every NBA slate. We provide full lineups for FanDuel and Yahoo, including GPP lineups. So you're getting everything uh, that we can put forward, everything within the guidelines of DFS. And we post those about 30, 20 to 30 minutes before lock. So you have time to get set, get your lineups in there. And then, you know, between checking out the pod and those lineups, and being in our Discord to see the final moves, uh, we've seen some tremendous success from our members. So we'd love to have you, dfscoachtalk.com. Give us a try. Ten bucks. I mean, you can't beat it for uh, getting all of our sports and everything that we're doing. All right. Appreciate that. Two games left, and we've got a 9 and a 9.30 Eastern. So we do have two games that are later. So it's a, a 2 our uh, gap between those first uh, three games that all start at seven. And then we've got this nine o'clock game, the Golden State Warriors at the Sacramento Kings. Um, Golden State is two and oh, with a couple of uh, really impressive wins. Sacramento one and one. Um, we've got Golden State favored by three and a half. It's a 233 and a half over under. So uh, you know, fantastic over under biggest one on the main slate uh, by a lot. So that this is a good game to focus on. I like it regardless, even without the Vegas numbers. It's close enough with that three and a half point spread. And then these implied totals are just fine. 118 and a half for Golden State, 115 for Sacramento. So we should get good solid minutes from all of our key guys in this game. Um, from an injury standpoint, Looks like we have Iguodala questionable, and then we have Kaminga, Thompson, and Wiseman out. Uh, the only Sacramento injury being reported is Harkless, and he is questionable. So we want to uh, keep a bit of an eye on that also. All right, let's talk uh, about some of the key go-to guys here. I made the big, huge mistake the other night of – Being a top leaderboard, but not having Curry in the late game, and I had typed in Discord, as long as Curry doesn't have some kind of insane game, we're in good shape. Well, guess what? He was 10 for 10, I think, at the beginning of the game. Couldn't miss. Was just unconscious. You know, just throw it up, not even look at the bucket, and it's going in. You know, when Curry has a Curry game, what are you going to do? But he is a crazy 11K today which seems very, very aggressive. But again, you know, I'm not going to go there and say, you know, what I said before, because I'm sure it's Curry. He's the greatest shooter in the history of the NBA. 
So anything could happen. But that is a big fat price, a uh, bit concerning there on, you know, how you would really feel good about the rest of your lineup, especially if you're buying up with one of the bigs if you go with Curry. So we'll see. Jordan Poole at 5'7", you know, he's shown flashes of being really good uh, and, and being able to score. He's getting a, more of an opportunity. You know, Wiggins in that 6K range, he's 6K, is, is reasonable. And he can have games where he pays off his price. Um, after that, though, the bigs, I haven't been really, you know, much about Draymond Green. He, I know he can do some triple-double stuff, but... I don't trust the scoring and the, the consistency there, especially at that 7K tag. Looney, 3-5, you know, he's okay for a pinch. If you need to a real pay-down punt center, you can think about Looney. Uh, Bench-wise, Damian Lee's been getting a lot of time at 3-5, but it's risky. Uh, Bielitz is probably one of the stronger value plays also. He's at 4-7 which has come up some, but he's been a major player in these first couple of games for Golden State. He's getting a lot of minutes at center and some minutes at power forward. So certainly somebody you can consider, along with uh, Juan Toscano. He dropped the Anderson, by the way. So Juan Toscano is only 3-2, and again, a guy that can, uh, you know, great GPP, GPP play because he can – Really have a nice, you know, 30-point fantasy game, 35 even, and if he's really playing well, or he can have like a 10. So a little concern there, but he is getting minutes, somebody you have to at least look at. Uh, you know, from the other side of the ball, De'Aaron Fox is at 8-3. Uh, he's playing some great ball. Uh, I don't think Curry and Poole defensively are anything to write home about. So Fox is a consideration. I mean, you know, he's almost... 3000 he's $2,700 less than Curry. So definitely very tempting there. Uh, Tyrese Halliburton, a little bit on and off, still rookie-ish yet, you know, even though it's a second year. 6.2 is a little pricey for him. You can consider him. I think Barnes is overpriced at 7.3. Holmes price is down to 5.9. And in this matchup, when they play small ball and stuff, I think Holmes is a really nice play. He is definitely in consideration for my center uh, in this game. Uh, and I think that, you know, he's worth uh, a discussion. Buddy Hilled at 6-3. It depends on the minutes. Davion Mitchell is going to get to guard Steph Curry. So everybody's talking about him, you know, rookie out of Baylor. Uh, he's played, shut down some guys, sort of, uh, you know, in Lillard and, and some of the guys he's faced. Now he gets to face Curry. And, you know, with his nickname off night, we'll see if he can create any trouble for Curry. But he'll get minutes off the bench. Terrence Davis has been playing a lot as well. Uh, after that, it's it's really not anything to consider. But, you know, Fox, Holmes, certainly, uh, if you want to take a super flyer uh, with Mitchell or Heald, um, possibilities there. Damian Lee, very cheap. Jordan Poole, reasonable. Uh, Wiggins also. I don't think I'm going to go to 11K on Curry, but I'm not saying a single negative word about Steph Curry because I just hope he has a normal game. Uh, all right, let's finish this off. Fun late game. I can't wait to watch this. Uh, it is going to be a fun matchup, and it's the Memphis Grizzlies at the LA Lakers. Uh, Lakers are favored by five and a half, even though they're 0-2. They desperately need a win, though. 224 and a half over under. Implied for Memphis, 109.5. For the Lakers, 115. Uh, as far as any injuries in this game, uh, Dylan Brooks has not uh, is now finally uh, on a probable standpoint. He hasn't not played in the first two games. And the Grizzlies are still 2-0, even without Brooks playing. He's heart and soul of that defense and he can score the ball a bit. Not going to go there, but he certainly helps the cause for the Grizzlies. Uh, and uh, so we'll see. From the Lakers' side, uh, Dumbuyu is questionable. We know that Ariza, Ellington, Horton, Tucker, and Nunn remain out. Uh, so let's break this game down a bit here. <clears throat> John Morant, 9-2. 
uh, you know, he's going to definitely get Kent Bazemore defense. Uh, Bazemore can be pretty crafty defensively. That's the only reason he's been playing is because, uh, you know, of his defensive uh, prowess. And they need him on the perimeter defensively because they don't have much of that. Um, so, you know, uh, Jaw is going to face a little trouble there, but he's been phenomenal. I mean, he looks like an all-star this year. I really think he'll make the all-star team. Uh, so somebody definitely to consider at 9-2. Um, DeAnthony Melton, 4-2, you know, hit or miss, more of a GPP play. I love the way Desmond Bain has been playing. Uh, second year player, very confident, takes the shots, and he's only 4-2. Uh, not a bad guy if you're looking for uh, a cheaper play. Uh, where I'm not going to go, and I've been high on Triple J early on here, but Triple J Adams going against that formidable defensive front line that rotates out between Davis, Jordan, and of course Howard. Um, that's going to be interesting. Um, I don't know if you saw the, the scrape up between Anthony Davis and Dwight Howard. That was interesting. I wonder if that'll cause some vibes or, or negative uh, situation with the Lakers. Not that they need any more negativity at 0-2 and, and looking like a very old team and it's the third game of the season. But anyway, I'm not going to go Jackson Adams there. Off the bench, you know, you get a lot of, of Kyle Anderson at 5-4. I, I don't have the courage. Some games he is 7x some games you know he's 2x so uh you know if you want to take a shot there i guess the best spot to do it is is in uh a gpp uh after that though i mean it's really about jaws the the main guy their their focus has changed this year their team is different um you know brandon clark off the bench just doesn't get you know the the minutes and opportunities but at 3-1 you know, if Jackson or Adams are in foul trouble or he gets some extra run, man, he's a tempting guy to put in there as a super uh, cheap play because he can get you, you know, 30 fantasy points and, and be almost 10x for you. I mean, it's possible, but he has to get the minute. So we're going to follow some info here and see, see what happens. Uh, Jackson does have a tendency to get in some foul trouble. So maybe that is a path uh, for that value. On the Lakers side, again, you know, I haven't, I've been a huge uh, downer on Westbrook and it's, you know, it's paid off so far. Uh, he's 9-3, which I still think is too expensive. I know he used to be 12K sometimes when he was averaging, you know, 40 point triple doubles and the insanity he was, but he just doesn't look like the same player to me. I'm sure he's going to be fine. He may get to value, but I'm definitely not going to risk it. I just don't see the usage being to where it needs to be for a nine plus player. I mean, it would literally take him being at about 8K for me to plug him in because I just don't see the usage there. And with LeBron and Davis playing and on no restrictions, you know, he is a far third choice on this team. So we'll see. I mean, there's there's gonna be a game. Uh, don't, you know, don't be surprised if there's some game he goes 20, 15, and 12 or something. You know, it's he's Westbrook. He's one of the best that have played that position and with the most intensity and explosiveness. But this just fit has not been great. Um, Baysmore, like I said, should get quite a few minutes to dog Morant, but super inconsistent offensively. Played him the other day, and, you know, he got some open threes. He just couldn't get anything to drop. So, Again, an option for super value play based on minutes, and maybe he does get some of these three and D threes to go down. Um, I like having either LeBron or Anthony Davis here. You know, they're in really we need to win now mode as far as they don't want to go 0 and 3, lose at home, and you know, allow the other team to go three and oh and in their con. So you know, I think they're going to come out and play hard, and, and I think they're going to play good minutes. Don't want to spend the 9-1 and the 9-4 for Davis, LeBron and Davis, but one or the other, that has been, you know, the, the million-dollar question for us at Coach Talk for quite a while now, um, and I, I still think that it is. And so we're going to follow uh, some information. We will narrow that down and come up with which way we're going to go there, but I guarantee you're going to see – either James or Davis in my lineup, and probably the other one will make my GPP. 
Um, as far as the bigs go, DeAndre Jordan at 3-3, Dwight Howard at 3-7. Again, you know, I don't know if I have the stomach for it. Are they going to get enough minutes? Are they going to play smaller with Davis at the five? Just not comfortable. Other, you know, off the bench, Carmelo, again, scoring dependent at 4-6. You can look at it. Monk at 3-6 has been popular but not producing. Rondo at 3-4, don't quite trust. And Avery Bradley at minimum three. Uh, he did hit a couple threes, but but not going there either. All right, my friends, that is it. That Those are the five games on the main slate with a little preview, obviously, with that early game of uh, Charlotte and Brooklyn for those that are going to play showdown. Uh, it's a fun slate. I think there's some great payups. Uh, you know, Julius Randle, again, uh, being one of the ones you want to really consider. Uh, Brown or Tatum have to be a good look. If Embiid plays, certainly. If not, Tobias Harris has to be high on the list. And then, you know, everybody has to make that decision on 11K Steph Curry. Uh, De'Aaron Fox, uh, I think, not far behind. And then, of course, you know, John Morant, Davis, and James in the late game. So those are all the pay-up guys. Gave you quite a few, uh, you know, value guys in here. Uh, it's looking more and more like a Stars and Scrub lineup build for me. I think I'll you know, probably have three higher price guys and then be able to fill out with more value and not have to go to the mid-level guys as much. And you know, early in the season, I think that's a really good strategy because there's a lot of stuff. You know, Coaches are still figuring out rotations and minutes uh, to some point. So uh, I think all of that is... Hopefully good information that's going to help you. We, I really appreciate you listening in on this Sunday. For those that are big NFL guys, enjoy that. But don't sell NBA short on Sundays. I'm telling you, it is a money-making day uh, in DFS and on all three sites. So, again, join us, DFSCoachTalk.com. Shoot something in there. You Hit us up on Twitter if you like. We're at DFSCoachTalk. I am at Joe Sarvati, J-O-E-S-A-R-V-A-D-I. If you have any questions, you want to sign up, shoot us information on any of those areas, and we'll, we'll answer and get you right in there. And follow us throughout the afternoon in Discord. If you're watching football, check in on the NBA Discord here uh, with us, and we'll get those lineups built. And uh, again, a full clipboard for DraftKings with a core and additional players uh, for DraftKings, and then a full lineup, uh, both cash slash hybrid, which are single entry GPPs, and a GPP, both on uh, FanDuel and Yahoo. So thank you so much for listening in. Hope you enjoy the day, and I will be back again tomorrow when we look to crush it in NBA DFS. <laughs>